we hear this story this morning, Chengdu, a city of 21 million people in China, shutting down because of 700 COVID cases there. This is an industrial city where you have Foxconn operating. You've got Intel, lots of big multinational companies, and a lot of um, manufacturing that's taking place. And I think that this has got to be a pretty big jolt to the markets when you think about these lockdowns continuing, because it's the supply issues that have been causing all of these problems with inflation, not, not, de not demand. When the market gets an idea in its head, it runs with it for at least a couple days. And the market <laughs> right now is saying China is slowing down, and Chengdu uh, lockdown is uh, uh, emblematic of that. And therefore, I think the market is going to overreact, as it often does, to this kind of news. Yes, they've had lockdowns before. The Chinese economy doesn't completely collapse. Um, China has been able to do things that we haven't been able to do to stop the spread of COVID. But this is not going to be helpful to the Chinese economy. But it's not going to make the Chinese economy itself go into recession. No, but I, I'm thinking of it from the broader supply chain issue. I mean, the big problem that we have with inflation, at least a, a large part of it, is because of these supply chain issues around the globe. It's, it, it's not a situation where, you know, demand is the problem. The Fed has this blunt interim instrument where they can beat down demand. We can't really fix the supply chains. And when you realize that the supply chains may not be getting better in the near future, that it, could be a problem, It's too. a challenge, there's no doubt. But I, I suspect that tomorrow there will be some positive news out of China, and all of a sudden the markets might react differently. So you can't get too upset by one piece of news out of China any given day, because any given day there's going to be so many different things happening in China. Generally, the markets are feeling uh, the Fed is serious about inflation and serious about getting it down, and therefore they're going to keep interest rates high. And as a result, uh, probably economic growth will be slower than people would like. But it's not clear that we're going into recession. Uh, right now, it's likely that the third quarter numbers will show positive economic growth. So we had negative growth for the first two quarters. I think our indications are probably around 1 to 1.5% 1 uh, GDP growth in the third quarter. And that that's the case, it might reduce some of the recession, recession fears that are now in the market. How are you viewing China right now, um, just even in terms of the geopolitical dynamic, the political risks of doing business in China? As I understand it, your, your sixth Asia fund ratcheted down its exposure specifically to China. That was over the summer, you told investors that. So what has changed now? Has things gotten worse? Well, there's no doubt that uh, China is a more complicated place in which to invest than it was a year or two ago. And that probably will continue for a while because of the kind of Chengdu factors, but also uh, the regulatory factors. They will probably ease up in time. And as you know, the regulators are, I think, making progress in getting the Chinese companies to be not delisted in the United States. That's progress. And I, I do think that some of the large companies that are waiting for their IPOs to occur, let's say, like uh, By ByteDance, are probably going to next year be able to do something more positive in terms of uh, liquefying some of the investments that have already been made. But remember, President Biden has, is the first president to not meet with the president of China in his first year in office for quite some time. And I now know that they're going to be meeting uh, not too long from now for the first time uh, when uh, uh, President Xi finally leaves China. He hasn't left in three years, but I think he'll be meeting with President Biden in Asia not too long from now. But relations between the two countries have gotten worse and worse over the last several years. The relationship is very poor right now. There's no doubt about it. Um, it can't get much worse, uh, short of something uh, happening in Taiwan that's more significant than what we've already had. Uh, but I think it will get better. We have a good ambassador now for the first time. Nick Burns is there. And I do think that Chinese do not want to go to a war with the United States. They have enough other challenges. So I think the relationship will get better. But right now, it's, it's got some real challenges for sure. There's been an implosion in the property market in China, the real estate sector, which is a huge uh, force in the Chinese economy. There's a, a recession in Europe, basically, with an energy crisis going on. Where are the best opportunities? I mean, are you, are you taking a look at all of these distresses and saying those are places right. we want to be? Well, whenever uh, markets go down, uh, the most common mistake investors make is they get out. That's the most <laughs> common mistake that people do. When markets are going up, they get in, and the markets go down, they get out. The, the, what you should do is the reverse. So when if, if Europe is, goes into a recession, it looks like it's not far from it, uh, probably it's a good time to buy things because prices are depressed. So I don't think people should be that worried about it. Obviously, prices will come back in time, as they always do. You use Europe as an example. Do you, are you investing in Europe right now? Are you... Well, Carlisle is a large investor in Europe, and we've had a big presence here for some time, and we have uh, a lot of activity going on now. So we wouldn't say that, that Europe is a place you should avoid investing in. It's, you just got to recognize that prices probably have to be lower than you would going to pay a year or so ago.